Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to edit a photo to create a neon noir cyberpunk type effect in Adobe Lightroom. So in my video last week I went out and did some nighttime shots in my hometown with my smartphone camera and I did quite a lot of editing work on those shots to give them the cyberpunk neon noir effect that we're going to be looking at today. If you didn't see that video I'll link it up top now and I'll put a few of the shots on screen that I got last week. So this genre is becoming more and more popular now. It's often referred to as cyberpunk or neon noir, and you might have seen it in films like Blade Runner, or in the gaming industry with releases such as Cyberpunk 2077 and there are quite a few photographers out there getting shots like this and one of those which I mentioned last week as well is Liam Wong so this is a book of his so you can see the effect that we're going for very saturated colours often focusing on strong light sources all of his images are in really built up urban areas, often in Asian cities like Tokyo, Hong Kong and things. But don't worry if you can't get to Tokyo right now, because you can get this type of shot almost anywhere, and you'll see that a large part of getting this look is in the editing process. So I'm going to show you that in a moment. Uh, before I do, I just want to say that all of the settings and parameters I'm tweaking today, I've screenshotted them and put them into a PDF guide, which you can download, and I'll show you how to get that at the end of the video. Uh, so yeah, let's dive in. It's this image we're editing. It's not the best I got on the day, I don't think, but it does contain the widest range of changes. So I thought it was a good one to just show you all the different things that I've done to the image. So yeah, let's get cracking. Okay, so if I reset this, you'll see what we started with. It doesn't look like the end result at all. So you can see there's quite a lot of processing gone into this to give it that look. The first thing that I'm going to do is crop it. So after a bit of deliberation, I decided that a square crop would look best for this image. I don't want that post on the right hand side, so I'm just going to bring that in a bit. And I think that's about right. And I think I've just straightened it up a little bit. Maybe just about like that. Okay. And the main kind of edits with this type of image are the white balance, the colour settings and the colour grading settings. It's all about the colours really. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I've cropped it is just go down to my colour settings. Now I should say that when I did this I did it all by eye and I was kind of playing back and forward with the colours to see what would work best. Right now I'm kind of replaying it for you if you like so I'm just going to go through. I've got all the numbers and I'm just going to show you. I'm going to adjust them as I go along and show you the numbers. But yeah, just bear in mind that that's not how I worked when I first edited this. I was yeah, working back and forward and doing it by eye. But we're going to bring the reds down to about minus seven. Oranges brought those really quite far down because I want those to become more pinky rather than orange. And this is on the hue settings, by the way. Um, the yellow, that's going to come down quite a lot as well. 38 minus 38 green I left I bumped up the aqua to plus 12 that's just to affect the green of the traffic lights and then the blue that came down a bit to minus 13 and we'll leave purple and magenta and saturation brought the orange down to minus 37 there is a tendency with these types of images just to go crazy with saturation um, and the final images are quite saturated, but you need to, you know, tone it down a little bit and rein it in because you can get carried away and you just get a ridiculous image which is just way too oversaturated. So I like to just bring down some of the saturations. Um, yellow and green we're going to bring down, so yellow to about minus 7, green about minus 15. The aqua, we're going to bump that up and blue we're going to bring down and it will also depend on your image as well what settings you're going to change with the colours 
this is what worked for this particular image. Luminance, this is just going to change the brightness of various colours. So we're going to put plus 24 on the orange, make that a bit brighter. The yellow we're going to bring down to minus 7. Greens, I'm going to come down to minus 15. Aqua to minus 15. And we'll leave the rest. Okay, so that's the basic colour settings changed. Now we're going to go to the colour grading, and this is where the magic really happens. This used to be called split toning. Uh, if you haven't updated Lightroom for a while, you might still see the split toning panel in your panel setup. But this is what it's called now, colour grading. And what this allows us to do is just change the colour values of different tones in the image, so the shadows, highlights and mid-tones. So what I'm going to do first is just change the shadows to a blue colour. So by going around the circle we change the hue and then going towards the centre will make it more or less saturated. So I want it around about there I think and I'm going to make it quite saturated. Okay, and then for my mid-tones, I'm going to go for a kind of pinky colour. So about there, and I want that a bit less saturated. I think about there is good. And then for the highlights, the bright areas in the image, we're going to make those a light blue colour. So. I want this uh, round about, let's have a look about there. Bring up this, I'll bring saturation back down a bit to around about there, I think. Okay, so you can see it's starting to take shape now and look more like the cyberpunk type look that we want. And by the way, if you are familiar with the old split toning panel that I was talking about before, you can still kind of see those values by clicking on the individual shadows or mid-tones and then dropping down this little arrow here and then you can see the hue and saturation settings here. So that's quite useful because that's kind of how it used to be set up when it was called split toning. Then you've got the blending slider and balance slider. So the blending slider will affect how these three tones, shadows, mid-tones and highlights will blend together. So if you go down to nothing, they'll be less blended together and moving up towards the hundred end, they will all kind of like blur into each other. And I'm going to go mostly in the middle, but maybe just a little bit higher, I don't know, something like 53. And then the balance is just how much of the shadows or highlights or mid-tones you've got in. So if you go to this end, you're using more of the shadows, and if you go to this end, more of the highlights and the mid-tones are somewhere in between. So I had this set at uh, minus 10, so just a little bit towards the shadow end. Okay, so that's most of the colour work done now. The only thing left really with the colour is the white balance, and I'm just going to bring that up a little bit to about 4,000. 700 and something maybe that'll do for now and I'll bring the tint down as well just to about plus 10. Okay that's more where I want to be now and I can start to work on my tone and contrast and things like that now. Okay so the first thing I usually do with the tone settings is just to click the auto button. You see that usually does a good job of making things look better and it's a good base to start working from usually just brings down the highlights quite a lot and bumps the shadows a bit, which usually looks quite good, I think. Um, but I'm going to tweak these a little bit more. I'm going to bring the highlights back up a little bit to minus 49. The shadows... The shadows are okay, actually. I'm going to leave those there. And whites I'll bring down to there. And blacks I'm going to... Just bring that up to minus 22. So that's just brightening the blacks a little bit so they're not quite as black. I'm not going to change any of the texture, clarity or dehaze on the global level, but I will do some selective changes to those, which I'll show you in a moment. 
and that's mostly it for the tone settings. What I'm going to do now, and this is one of the key parts I think with these types of images, is put quite a heavy vignette on it. So right down to about minus 28 and you'll see that really just adds a bit of drama to the image, pulls you in to the centre. But just to compensate I'm going to bring the exposure back up a bit. In fact, I say that, I'm going to bring it down a bit actually. I just want that really moody look, I think that looks really good. And that's all of my global edits done. So what I'm going to do now is put some selective edits on so that any changes I make will only affect those selected areas. So the first one will be with the gradient filter. So I'll select that and I'll just draw the filter up. In fact, no, I'm going to start that one again actually. I'm going to bring it up from about there. So that'll mean that my bottom area is mostly getting affected and then it'll start fading out from here to here. So if I press O on my keyboard, you can see the red area is what's being affected. And with that, I'm just going to bring up the clarity to about 17 and texture to 14. And that'll just give me a bit more detail in the bottom area where we've got these nice cobbles and reflective areas of light uh, which are caused by the, the shiny floor from the rain. And that's all I'm going to do with that one. And one of the things that I wanted to change on this one is the, the light here which is being caused by the traffic light. Now, like I said, I was just using my smartphone which has done a pretty good job generally. However, it hasn't handled some of the highlights brilliantly. It's quite burnt out if we look at that traffic light. And you get this strange kind of halo effect there. So there's not really much we can do about bringing that back. The information's lost there with the highlights burnt out. But what we can do is just soften that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is use the radial filter. And I'll just draw out a circle from there. If I press O on my keyboard, you'll see all the red area is going to get affected here. So what I want to do is click invert down here, which means that just the inside of the circle is going to be affected now. And I'm just going to change the feathering on that, just so it's a little bit more feathered, fades out a little bit towards the edges. And what I'm going to do with that is just brighten it mainly. So I'm going to bring the dehaze down. That kind of brightens it, but it also makes it more hazy looking, which just adds to the kind of effect of, you know, the glowing effect of the light. I'll bring the clarity down a little bit as well. And then I'm going to increase the exposure a tiny bit. You don't want to go too high with this. And the highlights as well. Quite a lot with the highlights. So you'll see we've got rid of that nasty ring now. We've still got the, the, the blown out highlights, the whites. But what we're going to do to compensate for that is bring the whites right the way back down to about minus 89. So what that does, gets rid of the halo, it increases the, the burnt out highlight, but because we brought the whites down it's not too distracting. And I think that looks better than with the, the weird halo in the middle. And the last thing I'm going to do to this image is just get rid of this strange flare we've got here. So for that I'm going to use the spot removal tool which is up here and just paint over that and that's it. So that's our final image. We compare it to how it was before. Quite a change and it shows you what you can do just with a smartphone camera and quite a lot of editing really. So that's how you can give your images that cyberpunk or neon noir type effect using Adobe Lightroom. So to get the guide, just head over to my website, robertbishop.uk. You should see my blog over there in the menu to click on that and go to my latest blog post about neon noir cyberpunk Lightroom settings. You can read the blog post and scroll down the page at the bottom, you'll see the link there to download the document containing the Lightroom settings. So that's it for this one. I hope you found it useful. If you're not subscribed yet, then please consider doing so. You'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing then. 
when we're not in lockdown, I'm hoping to be out and about doing landscapes, wildlife, macro, things like that. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time for that. And yeah, just thanks a lot for everyone for watching as usual. So that's it for this one, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye.